Hey everybody, so today we are going to be going through a book all about data catalogs and where they are today, where they are going to be in the near future, and why they are so important. And this is a book that I have myself read and I actually think is pretty good. This is not a paid promotional video, but one thing that's really exciting is as part of this mini series, every video has one book up for grabs for a giveaway. So if you are interested in receiving a copy of this book as part of the giveaway, look in the description box below for details. All right, so with that, let's go get started. My name is uh, Ole, Olesen Benjur. I, um, I am an enterprise architect in a, a company called GN Stornor. GN stands for Great Northern. Uh, and I, I am the author of the, the book, uh, The Enterprise Data Catalog, a book published by O'Reilly uh, quite recently. Um, and uh, I, I have a PhD in library information science. That's my academic background. Uh, one of the reasons why I also follow uh, you and your work, Ashley, because uh, I think there are some mutual interests there. Um, yeah, so I'm an enterprise architect. I've always worked with uh, data. I've been a specialist, a leader, and, and an architect working uh, with uh, many various data issues, data architecture, metadata repositories, search and uh, retrieval uh, in search. Uh, and uh, that's, that's really my area of expertise and uh, what I love doing. Well, and you can tell that, I mean, to write a book about it, you have to kind of be a little passionate about it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, yeah. it's fascinating, too, because, you know, it's... So first, before we, we go too far, uh, for those that might not be familiar, what is a data catalog and why do we need to preface it by enterprise? Why are there different types out there? Yes, so um, that's actually a very good... Uh, Excellent question, Ashley. I think uh, a data, to answer the first question, a data catalog is quite simply a metadata overview of all the data in your company. So it doesn't contain any data as such. It simply represents all the data sitting in the various data sources, IT systems, that is, that you have in your IT landscape. And it does so at a metadata level. And that comes with a, an array of uh, advantages and possibilities. Uh, and headaches. <laughs> a lot of headaches. A lot of headaches, <laughs> yes, definitely. You're right. You're right about that. So it's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to write the book, right? Because of those headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many, many failed data catalog implementations. It's kind of the ta taboo uh, for this technology category that you seldom see it work. And um, that is one of the reasons why I wanted to write the book. Um, and I, I love that you you don't sugarcoat that, right? Because I think oftentimes when we're talking about technology or, or solutions to things, um, there's the, the trap of, you know, making it sound better than it really is, or maybe not acknowledging the hardships to make it work because every single one of them has hardships. Um, oh, yes. I, I've heard this a lot on the on the knowledge graph side uh, that I work on the most where it's the best thing since sliced bread. It can do everything. It's the easiest thing to do. No, it's not. That's why there are so many people trying to educate on it and, and trying to help you know organizations get into it. And I would expect that data catalog is the same. I've seen more failures in data catalog in my time than than successes. But when it does succeed, you can really see the power of why people are trying to do it. Why is there an enterprise in my mm. in the title of my book? And what what does so coming up to the next question? What what does enterprise search look like? I think uh, some quite rich uh, questions. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. I could say there. Um, I think uh, the reason why we we entered uh, or, or put enterprise uh, into the title of my book is because I. Uh, I really emphasize uh, the importance of having one data catalog. 
it is not uh, a technology that you should consider a monolith like a data lake or mm. a data warehouse. You want to move away from this monolithic architecture these days towards some more federated mm -hmm. uh, data architecture. Some call that a data mesh, but the importance is really that uh, whatever happens in the domain stays in the domain, yes. right? And um, uh, and 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 so for for a data catalog, it's not the same ball game. You, you don't need to, uh, data to stay in the domain because it's a metadata tool. So you want to have a tool that spans as globally as possible, mm -hmm. uh, as possible because it's not something that will create a monolithic architecture. Quite mm -hmm. the contrary. You will end up with a lot of data silos if you implement a lot of different catalogs that mm -hmm. are pertaining to specific domains. That won't yep. be very efficient. You can't really use that to, to provide to cater for, for, for really powerful enterprise search, right? So that's why you want to have one or a, a few selected data catalogs with, with one central data catalog sitting on top of those, um, mm -hmm. depending a little bit on like the, the, the level of multi-cloud adoption and mm -hmm. other stuff that you have uh, going on in your company. And so what does enterprise search look like? Well, first of all, I, um, <clears throat> I, I discuss... I discussed the, the importance of um, I discussed the, the, the importance of, of information architecture in my book. There's a lot of um, manual and intellectual exercises that you have to uh, that you have to simply do if you want to have a functional data catalog. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that you have to sit and, and, and curate every single data asset that your uh, that your that your data catalog has. Uh, has crawled and, and exposed at a metadata level. You can you can apply a lot of AI or automation of various sorts to that. It's not it's not necessarily a, a manual task to that degree. But what you want to make sure is that the rules that uh, that dictate the automation of, of indexing at a metadata level is are well conceived. So I, I advise on stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I I also. Um, and so, yeah, so, so, so enterprise search for me is something that is highly dependent on uh, um, of being able to search in what I call three dimensions. It's not 3D, it's just three different dimensions. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have, a, you have a simple search function and you need to be able to, to rely on powerful, simple search. Mm -hmm. That is... That that is not something that is that comes out of the box from many data catalog vendors, but there are certain data just catalog. Just data catalog, though, like just not not to interrupt, but you know that that's there are so many other companies that I have discussed that they have you know a product catalog or they have something that you know uh, their customers actually interact with and they try to use the general search engines uh, as the backing of that. And they fall into the same issues I think that you're going to cover here, which is their data is different. And those search engines don't really know how to handle it. And they don't know the business context and all the other good things, right? Exactly, exactly. I I do have a very um, soft spot for, for knowledge graph-based data catalogs. Mm -hmm. And I emphasize those in my book as well because mm -hmm. They deserve a they deserve a fair share of uh, of the market for data catalogs. They are very powerful in 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 regards to simple search because they can contextualize each and every single search uh, by the ontology that is directly mapped to the say the knowledge universe of the mm -hmm. specific company in question. So simple search tends to work best if your data catalog is built directly on or su su uh, supported by a, a knowledge graph. And I, I discuss that um, quite a lot in my book, and I advise on how to structure those uh, ontologies if, if you have the chance to, to do that. Certain data catalogs come with what you would call a flexible meta model. That is basically the, the knowledge graph. And then you can then you can build that knowledge graph as, as you want and you can query it and you can see it. And that mm -hmm. is really, really nice. It allows for, for, for powerful, simple search. Mm -hmm. um, you would also have advanced search features mm -hmm. where you would go more into depth about, um, about how, to, uh, how to do very 
even long search strings uh, combined mm -hmm. with various operators to, to, to search for very, very detailed topics. So I see that as a must. But I think this is in particular, mm -hmm. this area of advanced searches where AI mm -hmm. chatbots will play a, a big role in, uh, yeah. in, in data catalogs. I don't think that simple search will be replaced by, um, by chatbots to a very large yeah. degree. The degree. I simply don't see any reason why. Uh, I don't see it as a superior technology in that regard. And actually, I was writing, I was writing the last part of my book called "The Future of Data Catalogs," <laughs> as just in the same month as uh, as ChatGPT uh, Chat Chat uh, free was released. So I was. <laughs> I, I was I was writing my future vision before it was released. Then it was released, and it, it really resembled my future vision for data catalogs with some very important differences. Yeah. And and so I was like, okay, what do I do at this point? Do I adjust my vision so that it depicts the evolution of technology, or do I insist on keeping my my vision and? Um, and, and only describe capabilities uh, and then only only briefly discuss the actual technology that would deliver on these capabilities. Mm -hmm. And I, I chose the latter and I'm very, very proud of that uh, because because I want to I wanna depict a reality where data discovery is frictionless, mm. completely frictionless, where companies no longer suffer from amnesia, where you can simply, where you can, where you can, you, you can search and find every single answer you want from the entire data uh, and knowledge base of, of your company. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I depict a lot of different uh, searches that are not possible today and that are still not possible with uh, the rise of generative AI. And I'm very proud of, of, of keeping that vision and, 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 and it serves as a kind of uh, a guideline to how um, chatbots can be used for data catalogs, mm -hmm. but they will not cater for everything that I describe. And I'm very happy that I, I took that decision. Um, you have to be real about it, right? And I mean, kudos to you for um, getting the book out probably on time. I hope maybe on time. I don't know if that's true or not, but even despite all of all of the hype, it's it's so hard um, to to go on any anything right now um, professionally and not see something about it because yeah. it's so forefront and it is changing a lot of the perception of what people want and need. What the reality is going to be is still to be determined, right? I mean, that's also what I wanted to write the book. I saw so much, so much. Um sales materials and i saw so many videos uh, on youtube explaining like really complex features in data catalogs if, if you're a business user you don't have any idea what column-based data lineage is you, you simply don't know what that is yeah and yet uh all of the sales materials i'm being a little categorical here not all <laughs> sales materials but a lot of of the like uh videos and uh, and white papers that i have looked that i looked at when i first saw this technology five six years ago now they just explained very very complex features inside the data catalog but there was no no, no one talked about what the data catalog itself was what mm -hmm. the purpose of the data catalog was like at an enterprise level mm -hmm. what do mm -hmm. you actually want to achieve and I also think that's why many implementations fail, right? That's mm. because people are not dedicated at, they are not looking at the, at the bigger picture here saying, okay, we need to, able to, we need to be able to search and find the data in our company. That's the yeah. purpose that mm -hmm. nothing more, nothing less, but yeah. that is pretty, that is also pretty complicated, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, so we need we need to, to cater for that um, uh, that uh, that mission with our yeah. tool, and I think many data catalogs also fail in doing that. Actually, they they are too technical. A, a successful data catalog has completely intuitive data mm -hmm. discovery. Mm -hmm. Like it, there is no there should be no friction. I mean, data catalogs 
are a key component for many very successful uh, tech companies in our era. It's a needed component. Um, how to uh, work with it and and uh, and 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 get it uh, functional in every organization is something that has to take into account more than te- the technology itself. Mm-hmm. And that is that is the info information architectural uh, element here. That's also why I use quite a lot of energy on discussing the difference between capabilities and processes when mm-hmm. you when you map your domains, for example, or when mm-hmm. you do a search. Like really, really, really stressing that you need more than just a technology understanding for this uh, tool to work. You you need to build beautiful information architecture and then it will work then it will work perfectly yeah and and keeping in mind your your actual staff that's going to use it and your business needs i think a lot of folks find it hard to explain you know some of their data or some of their queries when they're putting things into a data catalog because they're like well it's very unique to my use case and that's fine that's what that's why you have these you know, data mesh federated kind of things where it's like, yeah, you have your own stuff and it makes sense for your use cases and that's fine. But what Mm -hmm. out of you, what do you have that might be useful for others uh, to to utilize? And I think that that's the other struggle is folks are so like, well, everything is very unique to me and my business and my use cases. And I think that that's where like the data therapy stuff that I talk about um, on the channel comes in where it's like, well, actually, I can see how that query would be helpful for and then, you know, making those those connections, you know, across the organization and helping folks kind of get out of um, the bubble sometimes that we find ourselves in when we're dealing with stuff on a day to day basis. I think now I remember, I remember that didn't you do an interview? Weren't you interviewed by Loris Marini? Yes. Some mm-hmm. time ago. With mm-hmm. data therapy, I listened mm-hmm. to that podcast uh, and listened to that talk. It was brilliant. I loved that talk. Oh, good. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He's so fun. I, I That was a really good one. I'm going to be on a few yeah. other podcasts, I think, soon. But yeah, yeah. Just trying to keep up with it all. But mm-hmm. anyways, okay. So um, is the book out already? How would folks be able to get a hold of it? Yeah, thank you. It is out. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, you can also uh, just read it uh, online on the Rally platform. It's published by Rally. And um, I have had uh, many readers uh, reaching out. If uh, if there are any readers uh, on, on uh, listening to this, uh, know that you're welcome to reach out. You can reach me at uh, via LinkedIn. Uh, that's... That's the easiest way. Just uh, search for my name. You'll find me and uh, I'll answer every question. I have a principle that I help students uh, for free uh, to the degree uh, I have time, of course. Uh, and then I do some consulting also. Nice. Uh, 